welcome to the daily word for the Saturday after Christ the King. Today's reading is from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 15 to 27. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Then I desired to know the truth concerning the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. And concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and concerning the other horn that came up, and to make room for which three of them fell out, the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke arrogantly and that seemed greater than the others. As I looked, this horn made war with the Holy Ones and was prevailing over them until the Ancient One came. Then judgment was given for the Holy Ones of the Most High, and the time arrived when the Holy Ones gained possession of the kingdom. This is what he said. As for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth that shall be different from all the other kingdoms. It shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. As for the ten horns, Out of this kingdom ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. This one shall be different from the former ones, and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, shall wear out the holy ones of the Most High, and shall attempt to change the sacred seasons and the law and they shall be given into his power for a time, two times, and half a time. Then the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away, to be consumed and totally destroyed. The kingship and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the Holy Ones of the Most High. Their kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey them. This is the word of the Lord. A peek into the unknown. As far as the unknown is concerned, most people want to be able to find out The future and the reason for this may be curiosity or indeed fear. If it is out of curiosity, it is unlikely to have an impact on our lives and emotions. Fear, on the other hand, can stop us in our tracks, and it can cause anxiety, restless sleep, and loss of appetite. Various methods have been formulated by the community and local superstitions claiming to be able to foretell the future, divination, asking for signs and prophecies. Some people even read a few sentences of horoscopes in the newspaper to give them peace of mind, to warn them about the future and to avoid bad luck. Fortune telling is certainly not credible within the Christian faith. God is all knowing, almighty, all loving, and rules over all his kingdom. Jesus tells us 
even the hair of our head are counted. How could a God like this not care for his beloved children for the future? If he wants us to know, we will know. There is no need to look to the superstition or fortune tellers. Unfortunately, sometimes Christians fall into these traps without realizing it. The trap of praying into the future. But people are curious. We want to get the right interpretation of what is happening in the present world. A little insight into the future, especially when we see people attacking others and governments in disarray. When we see natural disaster and pestilence incessantly, we might ask, is this God's punishment of mankind, or are the end of times upon us? Are these things happening as a sign from God? In the Old Testament, God inspired the prophets to see vision and revelations with an explanation of what was happening so that the people of time would not misunderstand the current situation. Today's inaction from Daniel 7 is an explanation of vision Daniel saw earlier. The four beasts mentioned represent the four empires. The new one swallowed up the old one. The later ten kings arose. The four countries fell from the modern era can be interpreted into the following order. Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Greece. Each empire emerging as a stronger power than the previous one. The more divergent interpretation is that of the Ten Kings. Do the Ten Kings point to the European Union? The European Union as an enemy of the Holy One seems far-fetched. Therefore, regardless of what is meant, it is the summation of the scriptures that counts. Scripture recalls. The kingship and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the Holy Ones of the Most High. Their kingdom shall be all everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey them. This means that no matter how frightening the immediate process may be, the final victory will still belong to the most holy victor. It was good news for the captive people of Israel, even if there was turmoil, disaster, and persecution. The announcement of the finality of the Holy One's reigns indeed of a powerful guarantee. Brothers and sisters, the undesirable situation may be a continuation of the four kingdoms and ten kings, but those who wait patiently will rejoice with the Most Holy One in the coming victory. Let us have a time of reflection. Do you want to know about the unknown? Are you curious? Or are you afraid? What does the ultimate victory of the Most Holy One say to you? Let us pray. Almighty God, give us to know what we ought to know. Let us understand the truth that is contained therein. Let us be sure that you are reigning all the time. Amen.